In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with ScreenFlow 9 step by step, even if you're a total beginner to recording videos and editing videos so that you don't have to waste your time trying to figure it out on your own. Now you probably already know that ScreenFlow is an easy to use screen recording and video editing software for the Mac, but if you don't have ScreenFlow yet, I highly recommend that you get it by going directly to Telestream's website. When you go through Telestream's website directly, then you can download the free trial if you don't already have ScreenFlow and it makes upgrading to the new versions easier later on. I'll put a link down in the description. So from this point forward, I'm going to assume that you have ScreenFlow 9 installed and up and running on your Mac. You ready? Okay, so when you open up ScreenFlow 9 for the very first time, you're going to see this window right here. This is just the welcome window. Below that on the left hand menu is the new recording area where you can choose exactly which screens and which audio you want to record. Now under new document, you can set up a document or a project as I like to think about it. Um, you can start with a blank screen and then add media to your document. The preset menu over here will list all of the typical document dimensions like 4K, 1080p, etc. So you can choose from there or you can put them in on your own right here like 1920 by 1080 and then we have 30 frames per second selected here as well. So if you want to play around with screen flow but you're not really ready to actually record your screen you can start with a new document it'll be a blank document that you can play around with. Under recent documents you'll find any recent projects that you've been working on which is handy and then you'll also see new from template and this option we might get to in a future video we're not going to cover it in this video you don't need to really worry about it for right now if you're just getting started with ScreenFlow. You'll also see down here the stock media library. Now I don't typically use stock footage in my screen recording so this is unnecessary for me but make sure this is something that you actually need before you pay for it because you might not need to use outside media sources like photos, video clips, and audio inside of your screen recordings either. Oh and I also want to let you know that I created a ScreenFlow cheat sheet. It's a one-page PDF that you can print out or save on your phone or tablet or your computer to reference as you're using ScreenFlow. So I'll put a link down in the description to where you can download that free cheat sheet. So we're going to get started with a screen recording here and I want to show you the ScreenFlow helper up here in the Mac menu bar. You'll want to get really familiar with this because it's essential for recording, pausing your recordings, and stopping your recording. So you'll see we have this record option here. So let's hit record. This is actually going to record our whole entire desktop as you see it here, but we want to have a little more control over exactly what is getting recorded. Like, is it recording audio? Is it recording my webcam? Like, what's going on here? So from this menu, we're actually going to hit stop record. And when we do that, it will open up the document, open up this project that we are creating here inside of ScreenFlow 9. Since that's not what I really want to do here, I'm going to minimize that window, come back up to the ScreenFlow helper and choose configure recording. This is going to bring up that new recording window here. Now you can see before we continue that there is like a crap ton of stuff on my desktop. I want to show you a quick trick. If you just come down to hide desktop icons, it's going to clear all of the icons from your desktop, which is going to be a lot better if you're going to be actually showing your desktop screen in your screen recordings. It's a little bit less cluttered. We're in the new recording window here. So record desktop is just like it sounds. This is going to record your whole entire desktop. I only have just the one monitor, but you can set up multiple monitors to be recorded at the same time. That's actually a new feature of ScreenFlow 9. So you can see here that I have my Thunderbolt display selected. It gives me this uh, red outline to let me know this is the screen that is going to be recorded here. And it's also checked so that it's turned on. Yes, this is going to be recorded. Next thing down is record iOS device. So I'm going to plug my iPhone in here. I'm going to open it up and 
um, this will actually give me the option here to record my iOS device. So I have it checked, I can select it. If my iPad was plugged in or if I had multiple devices plugged in, they would all be here in this drop down. So I have my iPhone 10, this is an iPhone 12. I, for some reason, it still thinks it's an iPhone 10. So if you want to record your phone or your iPad, just make sure that this is selected here. Under the record video, this is going to activate the webcam as you can see here. And we can actually select which webcam to record from. I'm currently recording right here directly into my camera, but my camera is not connected to my computer through the cam link. More on that in another video. I'll link to that up above my head. But right now you can see me right here through the actual webcam that's coming through my monitor. Um, so we can record the video there. We can select what format we want it to be. So right now it's at 1280 by 720. For this demonstration, that's good enough now. Moving down to record audio. Now you can select what microphone you want to record from here. So I'm currently recording into my Audio-Technica ATR2100X. This is like a podcasting mic, super affordable. I'll link to it down in the description. And you can see that it's plugged in. It is taking in the audio. If I choose display audio here, that'll be the built-in microphone. That's part, part of my uh, Thunderbolt display. And then we can also record our computer audio. So any audio coming through the actual computer speakers essentially will be picked up as well. Now you do have to make sure that you install the audio driver for this. So all you have to do is just follow the directions to do that. That's a little bit more complicated. So we're not going to get into that in this tutorial. I'm just going to hit continue. And we have like literally everything checked here that we could possibly check. Now, before we start recording our screen, I want to show you the advanced settings here. So down here where the blue and white dots are, I don't know why they make them so small there. But if we move over here to the advanced settings, you can see that the record desktop frame rate is set to the highest and the timeline is set to 30 frames per second. So that's fine for me for most of my projects. If you were to combine your screencast with a talking head video like I do, you would want to make sure your frame rates are the same. So for me, it's 30 frames per second. If you shoot at 60 frames per second, or 24, then you want to make sure that they're matched up there. Now, if for some reason you want to record a loop, like if you want to catch something happening on the screen, for example, if you're a gamer and you're playing your game and you know something is going to happen, but you don't know exactly when it's going to happen, you can set your screen recording on a loop. So you can check record in loop for let's say five minutes or we'll, we'll go 10 minutes here. And then as you play your game and record your screen at the same time, it's going to record for 10 minutes at a time. So as soon as you hit stop record, you're going to have a screen recording that's 10 minutes long and it will be the last 10 minutes up until you hit the stop record button. You can also use the timer here to stop recording automatically after a certain number of minutes and seconds. So I'm going to uncheck the loop. I'm going to come back to our regular settings. And if we're ready to record here and we have everything checked that we want to have checked, we can hit this big red record button. It's going to give us like a summary of all of the different screens that it's going to record and it's going to count down. So we have a few seconds here. So right now it's recording everything. It's recording my audio, my screen, my phone, my webcam, everything, right? There's nothing really happening on my screen here, but if I open up Final Cut Pro, this is my video editing software that I normally use for any non-screencast parts of my videos. I just have a vertical uh, video pulled up here. So ScreenFlow is going to record everything Thing that you see on the screen, it's going to record the mouse movements, the clicks, and the audio and everything. 
So if we want to stop recording, we would come up to the menu bar and hit stop record or shift command two. By the way, I put some of the common keyboard shortcuts in the cheat sheet that I created for ScreenFlow. So just a reminder, I linked to that down in the description below this video. So once you stop recording, you'll see that ScreenFlow automatically opened up the editing window with all of the media over here. This is all of the screens and uh, the camera and everything that we recorded. It'll be over here on the right hand side. Plus everything is automatically added to the timeline. And if I zoom in on the timeline, you can also see the green waveforms right here. This is the audio that was recorded through my microphone. Now, most of the time, I don't actually want to record my whole entire display. There's a couple reasons for that, and I wanna point them out to you. So I'm gonna come back up here to configure recording. It's gonna give us our window again. So I'm gonna actually uncheck some of these things that I don't really need to have checked here. We will, uh, We'll record our desktop and our computer audio. If you come down here to this button, this is the set up and start partial screen capture button. If I hit that, you can see I have a little control thing here down at the bottom. And then I have this window that I can move around the screen anywhere that I want it to go. And then my screen recording will only be here within this window. So anything outside of the window will not be recorded in my screen recording. And there's two really good reasons why I like to do it this way. This may or may not apply to you, but since I'm recording YouTube videos, is to make sure that I'm recording uh, an exact size frame. So I'm gonna come down here to the very bottom. It gives me some preset sizes. So I want 1920 by 1080. There we go, oh, I was close. And I put my window in the top left-hand corner of the screen. That way it's going to record any menu options that I might select during my recording. Then I can hit this button down here at the bottom, the big red button. It's going to also count down for me. It still gives me this frame, right? So you can see, because it's a little darker on the right and on the bottom, you can see this is outside of the frame that's gonna be recorded. And then what I can do from there as you can see, I can have a script or bullet points or notes or something pulled up here on the right hand side. This is the actual script for this video. But when I'm recording just this one little section of the screen here, like say for a Final Cut Pro tutorial, for example, I can fit the Final Cut Pro inside of this partial screen that I'm recording and you won't be able to see the stuff that's happening over on the right hand side of my screen. Now for this I actually do want to add it to my document. I can give it a name we can say take two I'll hit OK and when I come down here and actually open up ScreenFlow again you can see that we have the original recordings that we did they are down here um, in the timeline. They're also over here on the right hand side. And we can take our take two, we can bring this down to the timeline, we can put it on any level or layer here that we want. So those are the basics of recording your screen with ScreenFlow. Once you get the hang of it, it's really pretty simple. But where ScreenFlow really shines, the reason why I call ScreenFlow my screen recording secret weapon is in the editing features and functions. So this is set up a lot like any video editing platform here, but if you're new to editing videos, it's really laid out in an easy to use and easy to learn way. So in the editing window here, this is the canvas. So this is like the visual project here that you are creating within ScreenFlow. As you can see, you can select all of your different files, move them around, resize them. And then you have your timeline area at the bottom with the canvas controls um, over here and the playback controls right between those two things. Now, the timeline is where you'll see the media files in action here. Um, if I do what is known as scrubbing through my files here, you, you can actually see, you can see what's going on on the screen as I move the cursor here. 
The timeline is really important because this is where you'll cut out parts that you want to remove from your project. Like if you mess up your words or need to re re-record uh, a section or if you want to rearrange or even delete certain sections of your clips. And you can make changes to your project's properties over here on the right hand side in the properties pane. Now editing your screencast with ScreenFlow is one of my favorite things but there's a lot to cover that's why I'm going to break it down step by step in the very next video that I have queued up for you over here and don't forget to grab that ScreenFlow cheat sheet that I created for you so you can learn all of the keyboard shortcuts and get a full step by step of getting started with ScreenFlow. I put a link to that down in the description.